Some of DC's treasures are the embassies that we have here, representing a world of culture, but they're usually off limits to the public. Tomorrow, you can go inside more than 60 embassies as part of Passport DC. I got a sneak peek inside a couple of the embassies to give you an idea what you'll find. And we're going to start with the southernmost Caribbean island nation, Trinidad and Tobago. The Embassy of Trinidad and Tobago consists of two buildings affectionately referred to as Trinidad on the left and Tobago on the right. We are a twin island republic. We're the most southerly of all the Caribbean islands. Our embassy tour guide is cultural attache Joan Brammer, who is not only an island native... Well, what do I say about my beloved homeland? Her relative was the first to serve as both president and prime minister of the island nation now home to about 1.4 million people. As I said, we're the most diverse. So in any one Trinidadian person that you might meet, that person might have three, four, five, six different races that go to make up that one person. That diversity contributes to all aspects of Trinidadian culture, including its artwork and its food. You know, we don't have a national dish because we don't know which one to choose. While Joan is connected to some political powerhouses and an expert in diplomacy. What do you take pride in for Trinidad and Tobago? I think we take pride in the fact that because we're so many different races, we celebrate each other. You'll quickly learn Joan is not afraid to celebrate pretty much anything, which, according to her, seems to be the Trinidadian way of life. Listen to me, it's one big family when you come to Trinidad and Tobago. Much like the island of Trinidad is the political and financial heartbeat, the embassy building referred to as Trinidad is where the work gets done. And much like the island of Tobago is more for relaxation, the embassy building referred to as Tobago, which was once a dot-com founder's private home, is more for entertaining. As we learned, whether Trinidad or Tobago, the party rarely stops, especially when music is involved. And this nation lays claim to the origin of one of the most distinct sounds in the Caribbean, the steel pan or steel drum, originally crafted from oil barrels discarded from ships. Those got discarded there, but we took somebody else's trash and made it something really spectacular. Musical treasure Musical from the trash, trash that was left behind. The oil drum is heated and hammered, each indentation a different pitch. So much like a piano, each key has its own note. Each one of these bumps here have it, has its own note. If you're going to teach me how to play, what's the first thing you would teach me? All right, so first of all, you're going to hold it here. Kendaya is a steel pan pro, a performer and a teacher, obviously with a lot of patience. The full skip. Oh. But a few minutes and a crash course later. There we go. And now I'm going to give it to you, the expert. <laughs> In Trinidadian culture, you can't have music without movement. Carnival is the biggest party in Trinidad and Tobago, held every February with headpieces and outfits progressively more elaborate for each day of the celebration. Now, on Monday, we don't wear the whole costume because, as we say, we want to free up. So we don't want to have the headpiece. So Tuesday, we go all out. All out. And then Wednesday, we go to the beach. Wednesday, we go to church first and then to the beach. <laughs> and then the beach. <laughs> During Carnival, the party and dancing never stops for days. So don't plan on much sleep. And don't be shy, even if dancing really isn't your thing. That you, when you leave here, you're going to be an honorary trainee. Oh, I love that, an honorary trainee. Got a baby. But I quickly learned that honor comes with a bit of an initiation. It's working! It's working! This, thankfully, is when Shermika and Giselle saved me by showing me how it's really done. From dancing and music to art and culture and just Caribbean vibes, it's just a very small taste of Carnival here in D.C., but just enough to make you think about booking that trip for the real thing. Are you coming, too? We're going to hold, all right, so we're all going to be in Trinidad and to be able for Carnival. I love it. It's a date. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> Carnival. I have not laughed that much. <laughs> the, my favorite part is, it's working, it's working. <laughs> I'm here to entertain. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm here to entertain. Hey, kudos uh, to you for being down and do the dancing and the and the steel drop. That was I had awesome. A blast. Thanks to everybody down at the embassy. That was so much fun. Uh, Carnival, by the way, will be in February, so we have time to get ready for that. Uh, the embassy tour is tomorrow, so everything that you saw there, you can see for yourself at the open house. 60 plus embassies have the free open houses tomorrow from 10 to 4:30. Choose wherever in the world you want to explore here in D.C. The Embassy of Trinidad and Tobago, you'll see everything that you just saw there. 1708 Mass Ave right along Ooh. Embassy Row. A couple quick facts, by the way. Um, you saw the postage stamp. The first Black Miss Universe was from Trinidad and Tobago. Ah. And the, the, who they refer to as the father of their nation, the first mm -hmm. prime minister, actually uh, was a lecturer at Howard University here wow. in D.C. before he went on to become prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. So that great history awesome. there. Great tour. I love their Thanks, culture. Everybody. I love it, too. Ah, so beautiful. much fun. We'll visit another embassy coming up at 830.